Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage. I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Sivetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Sivetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. When you pose as a communist for the FBI, you're on guard constantly, wondering if the party suspect you, being careful never to make a slip. This is all part of my nine years as a communist for the FBI. In a moment, listen to Dana Andrews as Matt Sivetic, Undercover Man. Dana Andrews as Matt Sibetic, Undercover Man. This story from the confidential file is marked Red, Red Herring. When you are an undercover agent for the FBI, you live the life of a spy. You trust no one. Tell nobody what you're really doing, not even your own family. And hanging over you every minute is the threat of exposure, of being found out. You know what that would mean, so you stay on guard. But still, you can't cover everything. Hello? Hello, Mom. This is Matt. Son! How... How are you, son? I'm fine, Mom. Any messages for me? No. But... uh... There was a man here earlier this evening. A man? One of my... Yes, uh, one of them. One of those... Those... Uh, Commies, you mean? Look. What did he say he wanted? He said something about meeting at the studio tonight. Oh, Matt, when are you going to come to your senses and break away from this terrible organization? And, Mom. And move back home here with the rest of us. Mom. We've been over all this before. But those people are criminals. The man that was here, cold and hard, suspicious. Uh, Burkhead, or, or whatever his name Burkhead. was. Burkhead? Burkhart? That was it. Burkhart. Are you sure? You sure that was the name? Yes, yes. Matt, you are not in trouble of some kind. Trouble? No, oh, of course not, Mom. I gotta go now. I'll be calling you, huh? Goodbye. The studio was a second-floor piano school on 9th Street. We used it for secret meetings sometimes in case the regular hall was wired. Two men beside Burkhart were waiting for me. Herb Beamish, chairman of the cell at the time, and Jason Cook, secretary. None of them looked friendly. Well, Spedic, it's about time. I've been trying to find you all evening, Matt. Well, I'm sorry, Herb. I, I didn't get home till late. You have met Comrade Burkhart, Matt. Uh, Comrade Spedic? Yes, about eight months ago in New York. Possibly you don't remember it, Comrade. I remember it. Sit down. Take the chair at the end of the table. Thanks. Spenny, did you say something about not getting home until late? That's right. And Mom gave you the message, so I came straight on down here. Comrade Svetik, are you certain you even went home? What do you mean? Bernie Lazari was waiting for you all evening in a parked car in front of your house, Matt. He just phoned, said you still hadn't showed up. Look... <laughs> What is this? What difference does it make when I come home? And what's the idea of having Benny spying Sit on down, me anyhow? Sit down, I'm sure none of us in the party would mind a little questioning from his leaders unless he had something to hide. And what do you mean, something to hide? You know my record in the party. You know the work I've done. Maybe we've only known part of it, Svetik. Comrade Cook, I'll handle this if you don't mind. Svetik, would you mind telling me about your operation at the Conover Manufacturing Company? Conover? What do you mean about planning that agent in the drafting department? That's right. Well, I got him hired through my connections in the U.S. Employment Service. 
still working at the plant as a draftsman using the name of Kepler. And what were his instructions, Comrade Svedek? The Conover plant is working on army contracts, control mechanisms for guided missiles. Kepler was to keep his eyes open and pass along any information he could get a hold of. And that's what he's been doing. And has he made contact with any other party members at the plant? No. He was specifically told not to. None of the others even know he's there. Who does know about Kepler? Well, just myself, Comrades Cook, Bemis here. Only the three of you. And all three, of course, are of unquestioned loyalty to the party. I don't get it, Burkhardt. What are you driving at? Just this. Comrade Kepler was arrested by the FBI today. I was caught off base. The three of them sat there watching me, waiting for my reaction. The heat was on. Of all the lousy luck, how did it happen? We thought you might know, Comrade Civetti. I wish I did. But I don't see what possibly could have gone wrong. It would almost seem as though the FBI had been tipped off about it. Tipped off? But no one except Bemis and Cook and I even knew. Tipped off by whom? By you, Svedek, you dirty rat. Now, wait a minute, Cook. Svedek, the evidence at the moment seems to bear him out. The evidence? What evidence? The evidence of elimination. It seems highly improbable that either Comrade Bemis or Comrade Cook could be a traitor. They've both been in the party for years. All right, but why pick me? You're the only other person who knew Kepler's assignment. Then I'm elected. Is that it? Yes. Unless Kepler has a different idea, that seems to be it. Meanwhile, you'll check in at the Barrett Hotel with Comrade Lazzotti. He'll stay with you until we make a decision. Guarding me? Is that what you mean? Comrade Svetik? Yes. Lazzotti will be guarding you. Benny Lazzotti and I checked into the Barrett Hotel a half an hour later. I was on the spot, and I knew it. But I did have one advantage. I realized that Burkhardt and the others were only guessing... They had no real evidence of my connection with the FBI. If I could manage to slip them a red herring, some other bald guy, a plan began to take shape. But somehow, I had to contact the FBI, and fast. I got the chance when Benny decided to take a shower and clean up. I waited until he had the water running, then eased the phone off the hook and gave the operator the FBI number. Hello? This is Parker, Ellsworth Parker, at Kepler Business. I'm sorry we couldn't warn him. He got hold of some top-secret stuff this afternoon. We had to move in on him. And where are you now? Barrett Hotel, 417. Look, I've got to make contact tonight. All right, Where? I'll try to be downstairs in the Barrett Grill in about an hour. Benny Lazzotti will be with me. I'll be covered. So it'll have to be smooth. Check. Barrett Hotel Grill in an hour. We'll get to you. Hey, Benny. What's a three-letter word meaning a small, dirty rodent resembling a rat? How do I know? Three letters like a rat. Hey! Maybe it's the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good guess. But the second letter is A. Oh, I don't get no place when I try to work them crossword puzzles. Look, Benny, you don't think I'm working for the lousy FBI, do you? It ain't up to me, Matt. All I'm doing is being sure that you stick around until they make up their minds. After that, well, I do what they tell me to. Yeah. Well, we'll find out tomorrow. How's about something to eat, Benny? You got sandwiches or something? No, the grill's open downstairs. Who's buying? I'll buy. Well, as long as it's still in the hotel, I don't see why not. Wait a second. 27 horizontal. Slang term for gullible person who is easily swindled. One, two, three, six letters. Oh, forget it, Matt. I don't know nothing about that stuff. Wait. I got it. S-U-C-K-E-R. Sucker. Okay, Benny. Let's go. crossword puzzle was only a blind. I'd folded a sheet of note paper underneath it. 
And along with working the puzzle, I'd written some quick instructions to pass along to the FBI. If they were able to make contact, it was all up to them. There was a late supper crowd, and the grill was about half full when Benny and I walked in. We took a booth in the corner, ordered some food, and I looked around the room trying to spot my contact. No luck. Ten minutes passed. And then some little blonde number who had been playing the jukebox apparently decided we looked available. Hiya, boys. Okay if a lady sits down? Hey, sure, baby. Just move right in here by me. Oh, you're too anxious. I'm going to sit over here by Mr. Woman Hater. Uh, Where do you get the woman hater idea? Because you act like it. You're unfriendly. You know, I used to go around with a guy like you, a fella named Parker. I don't remember his first name. I see. Hey, your music stopped. Anybody got some nickels? Uh, sure, baby. I got some change. Uh, what do you want to hear? Play some rumbas. I'm crazy about rumbas. Okay, baby. All right, honey. It's Ellsworth Parker. Are you Sally the... Dean, Washington office. Transferred out here three days ago. What's up? Plenty. They put this goon on me until they decide whether I'm working for the FBI. Hold still. I'm going to slip a paper into your coat pocket. Okay. Got it. He'll be back in a minute. Most of the instructions are on that paper. Tell him to use Richards for the frame. Benny knows him. Richards on the frame up. Check. Have him stake the coffee shop from 7 o'clock on. The meeting's called for 8. Right. And... Good luck. Thanks. I'll need it. Well, it's Betty. Jason. Where's Benny? And who's this girl you're with? Uh, she ain't with him, Jason. She's with both of us. What are you doing here? I live here, you half-wit. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot you lived at the barn. Where were you, Benny? Just playing the jukebox. What's eating you, Jason? Get rid of this girl. Hey, what's coming off here? Hey, I bet you're a cop, a plain clothesman. I said get out. Well, sure, sure, yeah. officer. I don't know these guys. I never saw them before in my life. I just... Said... Look, you didn't have to do that, Jason. We were just having some fun. You were given an assignment. Get up to your room and stay there, both of you. Yeah, but... Come on, Benny. He's frothing at the mouth already. Why, Cook? What are you so excited about? I'm going to enjoy breaking news, Fedek. You know, that sounds like a personal feeling. With me, the party always comes first. I wonder if you're as loyal as you claim to be. You... Good night, comrade. Come on, Benny. Jason was a rabid Marxist, and along with it, he carried a sullen, sadistic hatred toward the whole world. Even the other party members detested him. That's what I was counting on, because I'd pick Jason Cook for my fall guy. <laughs> Back to Dana Andrews, starring as Matt Sabetic in I Was a Communist for the FBI, and the second act of our story. Jason rode up on the elevator with us and then went on up to his own room a few floors above. Benny and I turned in. I lay there for a while, thinking, as I had many times before, that these things weren't happening in Europe or Asia. This was the USA, my own country. I'd grown up in it and never realized until I started working undercover for the FBI. Communist plotters, spies, secret police, the whole rotten authoritarian system right here in America, and I'd never known it. It was just before daylight when the knock came at the door of our room. Hey, hey. Hey, what's the matter? Hey, was that you, Matt? Oh, somebody at the door, Benny. I'll get it. Who do you suppose could be knocking at the door this time of the morning? Good morning, Comrade Svetik. Burkhardt. Mind if I come in? Would it make any difference if I did? Not in the least. However, you're hardly showing the attitude of a loyal party member. I'm sorry, Comrade. I want to get to the bottom of this just as much as you do. I imagine so. Take the chair there beneath the lamp. Well, Comrade Blazati, I suggest you go back to sleep. Stay in bed. This doesn't concern you. Uh, yes, sir. Anything you say. Now, let's review the facts in this matter again. Now? This time of the morning? There is no one as truthful as a drowsy witness, Comrade Zvedek. We often prove that principle at the Lenin Institute. Mm. 
Suppose we turn the lamp so. It's right in my eyes. Yes, another little technique of the Institute. We've just lost a very valuable agent, and we seem to have a traitor in our midst, an FBI informer. I'm sure it's the desire of both of us, comrades Vettig, to discover that tool of the enemy and to eradicate him. Lean back, comrade. Relax. Look at the light. There's nothing to worry about. The questioning went on for an hour and a half. Burkhardt was clever. He reworded phrases and used trick questions. But when he finally turned off the light and left, I was fairly certain I hadn't fumbled anything. Not that I was any closer to being in the clear, of course. That would depend on what happened in the coffee shop between 7.30 and 8 in the evening. Well, it's 7.20. I guess we got plenty of time to eat and get over to the meeting by 8 o'clock. No, sir. Plenty of time, Benny. It's all right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Oh, man, I'm so hungry, I could eat a three-pound sirloin. Easy, comrade. That's capitalist food. Yeah. We'll just wait till we take over and see what we give them to eat. No share and share alike, Benny? Not for them crumb bums. We'll be the big shots, then. All us guys have done the dirty work. What about the old brotherhood of man? Oh, that's for the birds, Matt. We'll be the guys with the big cars and the dames. And anybody that don't like it knows what they can do. You know something, Benny? You and I think exactly alike. I went on eating and talking to Benny, but I kept my eyes on my top coat, hanging on the wall by the cashier's desk. At 7.35, a small, unobtrusive man a few tables away finished his meal and went up to pay his check. He fished through his pockets for change and casually brushed against my coat. No one else noticed, but I did. The FBI had made a plan. I knew a sealed envelope had been slipped into the pocket of my coat. The first half of my instructions had been carried out. So far, so good. But the second half of the plan kept hanging fire. I knew Jason Cook's habits. I figured him to leave the hotel by 7.40. But at 7.45, he still hadn't come out. And I began to sweat. Then, at ten minutes to late, I saw him leave the main entrance and start along the sidewalk outside the window by our table. Hey, look, Matt. There's Jason leaving the hotel. Where? Oh, yeah. Must be on his way to the meeting. Oh, looks like he's running into a friend. Yeah, he's stopping to talk to somebody else. No, no, I guess not. Guy must have just wanted a light. Jason's giving him some matches. Yeah, I guess that is it. The fellow's doing a lot of talking, though. Well, it might be somebody that lives here at the... Matt. What's the matter, Benny? I know that guy. Oh? He questioned me once. His name's Richards. He's an FBI agent. Oh, you must be mistaken, Benny. Look, he's shaking hands with Jason, patting him on the back. I'm not mistaken. His name's Richards, and he's FBI. How come he's so friendly with Jason? I don't know. But I'm beginning to wonder. Why? What's the wonder about Jason's the guy they're looking for? He's the stool pigeon. Oh, there must be some that other explanation. That match business was nothing but a cover-up. I bet he handed a report or something to Richards right then. Yeah. Or well, took something from it. That's it. A payoff. That's what it was. Look, Matt, will you back me up? Sure, Benny. I'll back you up. It was 8 o'clock when Benny and I climbed the stairs to the meeting hall. Jason, Burkhart, and Bemis were already inside. As we took off our top coats in the ante room, I managed to slip my planted envelope into the pocket of Jason's coat. Then we went on inside. No late, Svetik. What's the matter? Afraid to face the music? I've got nothing to be afraid of, Jason. As I told Comrade Burkhart this morning when he interrogated me. Hardly an interrogation, Comrade Svetik. Rather a mutual attempt to arrive at the facts. All right, a, a mutual attempt, then. Well, uh, is the verdict in? Matt? Our lawyer got in to see Comrade Kepler today. Yeah? What happened, Bemis? Kepler says there was no reason for him being picked up except on a tip-off. I see. And he picks you for the number one probability. Why? On what basis? Basis? You're the only one it could have been. What more basis does anybody need? <laughs> 
It's been apparently in the face of nothing more than a wild guess. All the work I've done for the party doesn't mean a thing. It's a matter of total security, the good of the cause itself. Don't you agree with that principle, Comrade Zvetek? Yes, of course I agree, but now, I... wait a second, everybody. I got a question here on my own I want to ask. Benny, you're only here on an assignment. Nobody's interested in your question. Well, I think they might be if they heard it. Comrade Lazati. Jason, who was that guy you met out in front of the hotel a few minutes ago? The one that shook hands with you and patted you on the back. I don't know who he was. He wanted to borrow a match. What difference does it make? It might make quite a lot, Jason. Benny says he knows the guy. Well, what of it? Plenty. The guy's name is Richards. He's an FBI agent. Are you certain of that? Sure I am. He picked me up once. You don't think I'd forget him, do you? I tell you, the man asked me for a match, commented on the weather. I don't know why he shook hands. I didn't know he was an FBI. He gave you something, too, Jason. What was it? Nothing. That's a lie. You can search me if you want. I think that's an excellent suggestion. If you don't mind, Mark. They're lying, both of them. I only know what I saw, Jason. I didn't think anything of it myself until Benny recognized the man. It doesn't seem to be anything incriminating. Unless... Didn't you wear a top coat this evening, Comrade Cook? I sure he did. He had it on when he was talking to the guy. Where'd you hide it, Jason? What'd you do with it? It's in the ante room, you fool. What did you think I'd do with it? Would you bring the coat, Comrade Bemis? Yes, of course. God, this is ridiculous. Why, everybody knows Sit that down, I... Comrade Cook. As I think back over it, I recall you as being the one most energetic in pressing the suspicion against Comrade Svedek. I find that somewhat interesting. Hey, sure. He was just trying to cover up for his own game. Here's the coat, Comrade Burkhart. Ah, yes. Nothing in this pocket. I told you there wasn't. Just a moment. Hmm. That's not mine. I never saw that envelope before. Sealed. No address. No, it, it's a frame up. Somebody planted that on me. Hey, money. Yes, $500. Is that the price you got for Kepler, comrade? It's a lie. I don't understand it. We, we've got to get to the bottom of this and find Be out... Be quiet. Who... Comrade Svedek, seems we owe you an apology. Well, that's all right, comrade. I'm just glad we found out the truth. And happy that I can go on serving the party as I have in the past. <laughs> Sandwich, the grill's still open. No, I think I've grabbed a taxi and gone home, Benny. I wonder what they'll do to Jason. Oh, run him out of town, beat him up a little, maybe. <laughs> I wish they'd give me that job. When you think about him being the one who was always trying to push everybody else around, and all the time he was stooling for the FBI. You never know, Benny. You just never know. <laughs> Matt, it's a body. Yeah. Somebody jumped out of the hotel. Yeah. I wonder if that. Come on, Benny. Pardon me. Pardon me, please. Mm. Matt, it's... it's. Yeah, let's get out of here. Matt, it's Jason. It was. He couldn't take it. Couldn't face the disgrace. He committed suicide. Maybe. I didn't know whether Jason Cook had fallen, jumped, or whatever. I still don't know for sure. But I do know that Burkhart left town early the next morning. As Bemis put it, his work here was finished. I left Benny and walked along the street alone. I felt sick all over. Maybe Jason deserved it, but I hadn't planned to put him on that kind of a spot. I tried to push it out of my mind. An undercover agent can't afford feelings any more than he can afford friends or a family. And the one main objective was still safe. I was still on the job. Still a communist for the FBI. I still walked alone. star, Dana Andrews, will return in a moment. (laughs) 
This is Dana Andrews with the word about the story you've just heard. In this story, as in all others, names, dates, and places are fictitious to protect innocent persons. Many of these stories are based on incidents in the life of Matt Savetic, who worked undercover for the FBI. Next week, another fantastic adventure. Join us, won't you? <laughs>